Hey, how would you like to get your 3030 to drive a bullet 3,500 feet per second? Or how about your 30 at six going over 4,000 feet per second? Impossible? Well, maybe not. Stay tuned. We're going to see how fast we can go on this episode of Ron Spomer Outdoors. Hey, before we jump right in, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to RSO TV, where we have exclusive videos on hunting and rifle reviews and cartridges and hand loading and the things we can't normally show on these public channels. And I also invite you to subscribe to Patreon, uh, where you can help support our channels and get perks like free access to RSO TV. Thanks. Now, how are we going to get a 30-30 and a 30 at 6 to shoot as fast as I mentioned at the start of this program? Well, I think the first thing most of us would think about is going with a lighter bullet, right? Look at this little guy. It's an old spear plinker that only weighs 100 grains. Can I drive that thing 4,000 feet per second? I don't think so. And look at how inefficient it's shaped. Round nosed, that's definitely a plinker or a small game bullet for light loads, probably not fast. Step up uh, to the Hornady at 110 grains. And again, you've got a stumpy round nose bullet. You can probably push that thing 3,400, maybe 3,500 feet per second, but phew, that's not anywhere close to 4,000. Well, what about this sleek looking guy, 110 grains from Burger. Now those people know how to make a long sleek bullet and that's about optimized for a ballistics coefficient in a 110 grain 30 caliber bullet. But again, you might squeak 3,500 feet per second out of the 30 at six. Uh, the 30, 30, you're not going to come anywhere close to that. So, and then a final option that I would consider would be this Sierra. 125 grain. But again, as you go up in weight on your bullets, your velocity goes down with whatever powder capacity you have. So you're not going to get that where anywhere close to 4,000 feet per second, 43,500 feet per second. So how are we doing this? Well, one good way to get more velocity would be to shoot this bullet. A 55 grain, but wait a minute, that's a 22 caliber. How are we going to get that to shoot in a 30? Well, the uh, simple answer is a Sabo. Sabo, yeah, that's that plastic skirt that we get around our slugs. 12 gauge, 20 gauge slug guns, they're all using plastic Sabos these days because, well, you can put a narrower, lighter bullet in there. The plastic Sabo fills the bore, captures all the gas pressure so you get full velocity but you get more velocity than usual because you're pushing a lighter weight projectile. And the same thing can be done with metallic cartridges. In fact, Remington, back in 1977, I believe, started loading and selling something they called the accelerator. Now this isn't it, this is just a Remington box at 30-06, but when they were still making that accelerator bullet, oh my goodness, they were going 4,080 feet per second. That's what it said on the box, as I remember it. That is really fast. Well, they did it with one of these Sabos. Well, why don't they still make those? Well, I've heard various excuses one of them is they never really got grand accuracy out of it. Guys would say, yeah, I'm lucky to get two inches. A two inch group at 100 yards is not what you call varmint efficient. <laughs> Most guys who want to shoot lightweight bullets fast like that are looking at some pretty tiny little targets out there at significant distances, so you need accuracy. Man, they were getting that incredible velocity, but if there's no accuracy to go with it, what's the point? So I don't know if that was the main reason that they went out. Now, some guys said there was a rumor that the FBI or somebody didn't like them because with that plastic sable, there was no engraving of the bullet. So you're not going to be solving a lot of crimes if you don't get that bullet engraving matched up with the handgun or the rifle that was used in the committee of a crime. But I don't think that was it because sables are still legal on shotgun slugs. So, and by golly, they're still legal on center fires. It's just that Remington doesn't make them, but somebody makes the plastic sleeves that you can buy and make your own hand loads. There's a company called E. Arthur Brown, E-A-B-C-O.com that sells those plastic skirts. And then you can load up any 30 with those little 22 bullets. 
Now, now they're recommending that you use a 55 to a 60 grain bullet for the best accuracy. What they don't mention is what kind of accuracy. I don't know. Are you stuck with that two inch thing? I would like to think that a hand loader using these Sabos could improve accuracy over any factory cartridge. So if back in the 70s and 80s, the accelerators were not all that accurate, that's a factory load. And you know how those are. The, the cartridge is just one size fits all. But when you start hand loading and customizing all your sizes and your fits and your powders and everything else, you can really improve your accuracy. Whether that's going to happen with these plastic skirts, I don't know. But <laughs> might be sure fun to try, wouldn't you think? So what can you expect according to the loading data provided on that site, that EABCO site? You can get up to 3,500 feet per second with a 3030, pushing about a 55 grain 22 caliber bullet. In the 30 out six, they rated at 4,100. I think there might have even been a load in, and that was 4,200 feet per second. And now, I found out about, I mean, I knew about the accelerator stuff, but I didn't know about loading these things until I got this stuff from a fan. His name is Newbert. I won't give his first name just in case. Uh, but he said, I'm getting some incredible velocities out of my 30s. And he sent me this one right here, his 30 out six, and he was getting 4,100 feet per second out of that. Heck of a lot faster than the factory loads in the 30 out six or anything I can load with traditional bullets. He also sent this screamer, 300 Win Mag. I have never heard of that loaded with an accelerator, but he was doing it. And that website listed that going 5,000 feet per second. So <laughs> I have never shot a projectile out of a sporting rifle going that fast. And if you haven't either, but want to, Maybe this is your chance. Now, if you really want to push the envelope, look what else Mr. Newbert sent me. That's a 300 Weatherby Magnum. That's a screamer with regular bullets. Can you imagine what it's doing with this? According to the load data, they were going as fast as 5,200 feet per second. That is just unbelievable. Now, as crazy as that is, a 300 Weatherby isn't exactly the fastest 30 anymore. You've got the 30 Nosler that I think maybe beats it. Definitely the... Remington Ultra Magnum 300 beats it, and the 3378 Weatherby, which is the fastest, flattest shooting 30 caliber with traditional bullets that's out there. <laughs> what would happen if you'd load one of these little 55 grain 22 bullets in a Sabo on top of a 3378? Whoo, baby. Be interesting to see what kind of velocities you could get out of that. Well, the other way you can go is down. I mean, way down. Like, what would you get from a 300 hammer or a blackout. The 300 blackout with that little 55 grain bullet in a Sabo, that could be pretty darn interesting. And any of the old 30s or the new ones, there are so many different ones out there. You could pull up a 300 Savage if you wanted, a uh, 30 Carbine, uh, the old 30 AR Remington, if anybody still has some brass for that. Just a lot of potential. In fact, Mr. Newbert sent me one of these the 3040 Craig. <laughs> and I think he said he was getting 3,600 feet per second out of that. So, wow, this is something really different. If you are interested, just dive in, see what you can find out, buy some of those plastic skirts, follow the directions in the loading data, and absolutely stick with the data. Uh, you want to start low, naturally, with any hand load, start low and work your way up. But it should be fun whether it's accurate or not, just to be able to say that I have a 30 caliber that shoots a bullet 5,000 feet per second, or even if it's just four, you're setting some kind of a personal record, and that can always be fun. But I don't know if I'll ever get around to doing this. If you've got the time and the interest and you do do it, let me know what kind of accuracy you got and uh, velocity as well. I imagine you can get your velocity up there following their directions and their recipes and their load data. But I just wonder what sort of accuracy. If you can get these things to shoot minute of angle, oh man, I think you've got some pretty good options for hunting small game varmints, and coyotes and whatnot. It would sure make uh, your cartridge a lot more versatile. Now, one thing you do want to do if you load these plastics is to not shoot them in a dirty barrel. You re really need to clean that barrel down to bare metal 
so that those plastic sabos are riding on a consistent smooth surface. Uh, something about having carbon fouling and copper fouling in there just does not help at all with accuracy. And that's not bad advice for switching bullets with anything. I've noticed that same thing happens if I go from a traditional gilding metal jacketed lead core bullet to an all copper bullet. I always get better accuracy if I start with an absolutely clean barrel between the two different types of bullets. Just little tips there. So, hey, if you're interested, if you're a hand loader, as you can see, you do have a lot of option, even in the lighter bullets in any caliber like this 30. And only these really small, lightweight bullets in the 30 calibers are what make the 30 out 6, for instance, such a versatile cartridge. You just have all sorts of opportunities to load some really crazy lightweight bullets. Uh, and then, of course, you can drive the big heavy ones for more energy on bigger targets. So, a lot of fun when you're hand loading. And oh, this little device uh, was just sent to me for a review. We might get around to that. It's a new ultrasonic game caller that supposedly puts out sound that we can't hear, but coyotes and foxes can. It's way up in the register somewhere, and they reportedly respond to it quite well. I'm going to try to get out and experiment with this and see how well it works, and maybe we'll give you a report. Until next time, Ron Spomer. Hunt on us to shoot straight.